Welcome to The Martian, where Mars people are doing NASA stuff on Mars. And one of those people is Matt Damon. And he having some banter with his teammates, then danger approaches in the form of a storm that is bigger than they anticipated and will fuck up their whole shit. So it's gonna cut their stay on Mars short. Matt's like, let's stay and see if we can win it out. But Murph, who's the commander of this team, goes, fuck you, you made my dad choose the wrong planet, and we're getting off this one. Fuck you. And they make their way to the rocket ship, which is called a MAV, which stands for Matt's Ass Voluptuous. So it does not stand for Mars Ascent Vehicle. So they're on their way to that, and Matt gets launched into oblivion by a communication antenna thingy and they're forced to leave without him. Sad boy hours, crew feel bad, NASA makes statement. But why didn't they go to the map earlier? I mean, Martinez went there because he was the map guy, he flying dude, right? He set the map up and they probably stayed behind to close up shop. But why? Murph made it out to look like a, it's a very abandoned ship, leave everything behind because we're gonna die situation. Why not go with Juan? Huh? Why not go with Juan right away? Don't sit there and tell me you got NASA procedures. Fuck that, you're gonna die. You gotta go now. Anyway, that don't matter, cause Matt ain't dead. He wakes up on Mars with a low oxygen level and some shit stuck in his body and the blood and dirt sealed up the hole and did not allow, you know, air to leak out that much. And he goes back to Mars house, which is called a HAB and stands for heinous, anus, benus. <laughs> So he in there and he tends to his wounds and does a vlog, talks about how he's trapped on Mars with food that's gonna run out and no way to contact NASA cause the antenna thingy broke and hit him and he realizes that his situation is fucked. But then he has a brilliant idea in a place where all brilliant ideas are made, the toilet. You see he's gonna use his own shit and his teammates shit as fertilizer to plant potatoes so he collects the poos that they took and packaged very neatly and might I just say what perfectly shaped turds these astronauts took. Like imagine if one of them had diarrhea, I guarantee the package would not look like that. Anyway, he collects some dirt too and mixes up the poo and plants the potatoes, then gets a bunch of unused hydrazine, which I think is rocket fuel, and uses the power of science, chemistry, and Jesus to blow himself up. But then he puts some stuff on and successfully makes water to create a misty room for his potato farm so they can be watered and grown shit. And a little while later, what do you know? Life on Mars. Meanwhile, back at Earth, NASA mourns Matt's death, then Guy from Dumb and Dumber, aka Teddy Roosevelt, aka not Teddy Roosevelt, aka just Teddy, who directs NASA and Vincent Vega, who directs Mars missions, have a NASA squabble, then blonde. Andy McGothis checks some coordinates on Mars and sees that shit has changed. Oh my god, I just understood this scene. He's the Mars director, Mars mission director, and he wants more satellite time. He agreed and he sent her these coordinates, right, right, right. And she looked at them and that's how they found out that Matt's still alive. Shit. Only took me five years to realize this. I'm such a fucking retard. So Blondie calls up Teddy, Vincent, and Blondie number two who works in media, so who cares. And they conclude that Matt is still alive but they won't tell his crew cause they're dicks. But they do tell the world that Matt's still alive while disco music slowly drives him insane. But he starts thinking about the long game, you see. He knows that NASA will send another mission to Mars after four years and he's gonna need to be at that landing site 3200 kilometers away. So he begins testing the range of his crappy rover to make game plans and to stay warm at night he digs up basically a radioactive bomb they used for space stuff. She was not supposed to dig up and he puts it in the car with him. I mean, Rover, but it's fucking, it's a car, okay? It's a car from Mars, who cares? So he puts it in the car and the radioactive decayingness of the radioactive thingy makes heat and he is no longer cold. And fair enough, he no longer has to resort to firstly masturbating through the night to keep warm, but he's definitely gonna have like a third testicle at the end of this, right? Never mind. Back on Earth, Ted Bundy tells Ohana I means family, the rocket science guy, to build a rocket to resupply Matt in three months instead of nine months and he's like, impossible. Shut up, I'll give you money, okay? Then let's start who's the director of the spacecraft that the crew is returning on is like we have to tell the crew now i am boss man we wait three months until hawaii finishes the rocket then we tell them we'll do our best Mark dies if you don't. Yeah, all right, fucking relax, no pressure, jeez. Back at Mars, Matt really needs to find a way to talk to Nessa, so he has an idea and goes on an adventure with his rover, while Vince, who's watching him back at Earth, be like, the fuck he be do- oh, I need a map. So he draws on a cafeteria picture and goes, okay. I know where he's going. So you're NASA with like 14 or so satellites around Mars and the best map you could find of it was a cafeteria picture. For God's sake, you're looking right at one. Just zoom in, you dumb hoe. Matt makes it to this old 97 NASA probe called Pathfinder and Vince goes to the JPL lab in California and JPL stands for juggling poop liquors, of course. Meets up with Ohana means family, sets up a Pathfinder replica so that the one on Mars replicates the movements of the one on Earth and shit and you know, the camera sees what it sees on Mars and stuff like that, okay? While they do that, Matt hooks up his Pathfinder to a power supply 
supply does nasa still use the same plugs they use in 97 for power supplies i'm not a nasa dude so i don't know i'm just saying it's mighty fucking convenient whatever they set shit up and matt sends a message to earth and this slot goes eh, 32 minute round trip communications with only yes or no questions <laughs> what a snappy conversation this is gonna be shut the fuck up and point the camera at yes you fucking nerd so bitch points it and whoa message received matt makes a circular setup to talk to them in ascii code which is super nerd shit so no not just yes or no questions cunt get alpha motherfucker then they help him connect the rover to the pathfinder so they can talk better and they leave him on red for a long ass time like seriously it takes 30 minutes between messages how long did he have to wait before sending this are you receiving message anyway he finds out that they didn't tell his crew that he is alive he'd be like what the fuck and they'd be like watch your language which is being streamed live all over the globe he'd be like oh yeah then he sends a really long message and feel free to chime in on what you think this message was but here are my guesses either a really long fuck or a really long penis so Ned tells the crew and they are devastated that they left him behind feels bad so sad rate zero out of eight mate no debate cannot contemplate uh ejaculate then Matt be having fun finding out that him planting shit on Mars means that he colonized Mars and NASA asks him to pose for a picture so he gives them the fonz a what is he doing? I asked for a photo and what, he's the Fonz? I can't use this, Vincent. Why not, you fucking killjoy, lame-ass hoe? I need a picture of his face. What do you mean? You can see it right fucking there. Bruh, this bitch. Whatever, because one day the room that pressurizes the hab gets uh, cut and blows the hab up. The room flies away and Mark cracks his visor thingy and duct tapes it so he doesn't die and goes into the hab to find that half of his food supply has been ruined and spends the rest of the night in the rover. I assume he got the nuclear heater inside with him. But anyway, now the JPL team has only half the time to make a resupply probe and send it over there so they have to work doubly as hard now. Then NASA allows Matt to talk to his crew for all of five minutes. Wow, how generous NASA. Then he uses a plastic tarp and the power of duct tape to seal the hab, pressurizes it and fixes it, which is a very sketchy solution to say the least, but what's he gonna do, you know? And I know your situation is dire, dude, and that's all you got, but considering there's a storm going on outside right now in this scene with rocks flying around that can cut straight through that plastic, which is literally the only thing standing between you and imploding, you should really consider putting on a fucking spacesuit, dude, just to be safe, you know? But anyway, back on Earth, Earth, Charles Gambino has an idea. It's gonna be important later. Just know that Charles Gambino in this movie and he has a brilliant idea. Cut to NASA dudes who are 15 days behind schedule on the probe. So to speed shit along, they gonna cancel the pre-flight checks, which works, and they make the probe. It launches just fine, but then blows up mid-flight because the vibrations happened and that would have shown up if they did any pre-flight checks, but they didn't. So poopy doo doo moment. Matt talks some more to his crew and some Chinese people go Ching Chong Wing Wong Tai Ling Wong Kai Ting Tong Xing Bong Ting Tong, which roughly translates to "We have rocket, we can help," and China China will rock cool. So they offer to help and Ted be like, yes! And Hawaii gets to work making a probe in 28 days this time with his team. Meanwhile, Dollar Glover does some big math, goes over to NASA, you see he's an aerodynamic space engineer person and in a meeting where he does not know who Teddy is, he proposes that the crew aboard the Kermit spacecraft ex starts accelerating towards Earth and slingshots around it using its gravity while they shoot a care package up into space and they catch it while they're slingshotting around and they make their way to Mars at super speed. And once they get there, Matt is going to use the math that they're going to want to use for the next Mars mission to launch up there and meet them in space, slingshot around Mars, make their way back home. And that is going to be much faster than just sending him supplies so we can, you know, spend much more time on Mars and wait for another manned mission over there. But here's the thing, they can only do one of those because they only have one China rocket. So they can A, have a high chance of killing one astronaut or B, have a low chance of killing six astronauts. And Ned thinks this decision should be left up to the crew, but Teddy's like, nope, I'm the boss man and I go with option A. So Mr. Stark calls him a coward. And by the way, Donald stole Teddy's pen because that is not the one he took from him, but the one that Vincent clicked off the bitch's head so yeah I don't know why I mentioned that moving on Stark sends a secret message about plan B to the crew aboard the Kermit why am I speaking like this so Murph Martinez bitch boy all German and I actually know her name her name is Johansson but I'm gonna call her hot nerd because I tap that and also tap Murph why are all female astronauts so hot anyway they all come to the decision that they are going to go back for Matt and defy NASA's decision to go with plan A and the hot nerd says some tech shit which basically translates to don't worry about NASA trying to do remote override on our trajectory or whatever because I can't and disable it and they start readjusting their course to a course that's gonna add 500 more days of space travel to their mission and back at nasa mission control be like what the fuck is going on why are they off course and why can't i do anything about it and where's my fucking latte oh my god then teddy has a meeting with ned like so the kermit changed course basically forcing our hand to do plan b you know anything about that there must always be a stark at winterfell what what uh <clears throat> nothing uh, yeah i don't want to think about that dude. yeah yeah sure sure i expect your resignation after the end of this okay understandable have a great day so matt updates his vlog modifies it over for the journey gives it a giant tumor and 
China sends the probe up to the Kermit. I notice a romantic connection between Bitch Boy and the Hot Nerd. My dreams are shattered. And does this mean that they're gonna do the fucky fucky in space? I bet it does. They get the probe and make their way to Mars. And seven months later, we see Matt Damon's ass cheeks. And he proclaims himself to be a space pirate and embarks on the long ass journey to the Mav. By the way, Matt's a very witty person in this movie. And he's gonna go on a profound speech about how he's the first to do everything on this planet wherever he goes. So I cannot believe that he missed out on the opportunity of taking a Mars bar to Mars and being the first person to eat a Mars bar on Mars. Totally missed opportunity, dude. Anyway, he drives around, stops to recharge, drives around, stops to recharge, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Then when he gets at the Mav, they tell him that in order for the Mav to get high enough to get picked up by the Kermit, he has to make it drastically lighter. Basically, he has to take off everything. Take off the windows, the nose, the seats, the control panels, just leave one seat in there for him to get launched into fucking space and probably die. But they say that is not a problem because Mars' atmosphere is pretty fucking thin and also they're gonna put a tarp over it and it's gonna be controlled by crazy Mexicans, so eh. And Matt's like, god damn fucking shit. But he has no choice, so he does that and zero hour comes. He gets in a spacesuit and why is he so beat up? Has he been fighting bears on this planet or something? Doesn't matter. Martinez launches his MAV and after dealing with some inflate issues, they get the trajectory right, but they'll be moving too fast in comparison to him to catch him. So he'd be like, I can poke a hole in my suit and fly over to you like Iron Man. Nah, 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 nah. We gonna blow a hole in this ship. What? Paul German goes inside and makes a bomb with the power of chemistry and bitch boy does some parkour on the outside of the ship without a tether. Fucking huge balls, man. And ooh, they are a thing. They should have SpaceX. <clears throat> focus, focus. Okay. They place the bomb and lock themselves in a safe part of the ship and blow the bomb and all the air rushes out, slowing the thing down. So now they have matched their speed with Matt, except I don't know how they're going to get all that air back. I'm sure NASA has some sort of air canister thingy for them to get the air back. Anyway, the speed issue is solved, but now another issue has arisen. They are going to be too far away from Matt. So Murph gets in a suit and goes for Matt with a tether. Thank God. But another problem, the tether is too short. So Matt's like, fuck it, I'm going Iron Man and cuts a hole in his suit, flies over like an unstable ballerina. She gets a hold of him. The crowd goes wild. He gets inside and they call him a stanky bitch because... I haven't had a shower. <laughs> Incorrect. As I recall, last time you were at the Hab, you had one. Granted, it wasn't a good one because you probably showered in your own recycled urine, but still. Haven't had a proper shower in a year and a half would be more correcter, so fuck you, Matt. Anyway, cut to Matt on Earth. He's given smart guy NASA lectures now. Martinez does another mission. Murph runs. Bitch boy and hot nerd have a baby. Wait, how long after getting back to Earth is this? I know it's pretty hard to conceive a baby in space, but don't you dare take the possibility of SpaceX away from me, movie. This movie gets 87 bags boonies out of 6.9 Daffy Dukes.